This video will cover 5 levels of animation in LumaFusion, taking you from a complete beginner to an animation pro. Then, we'll dive into some real-world examples so you can apply these techniques to your own edits. Starting with the fundamentals, most of you already know this. To animate, we use keyframes. Keyframes mark the start and end points of motion or effect intensity. For example, I can add keyframes to bring this photo in from outside of frame. By the way, if you want to follow along, open LumaFusion and create a 60fps project for a smooth look and then add any image to your timeline. To add a keyframe, double tap on your image and ensure you're in frame and fit. I want this photo to enter from the left. First, pinch to resize the image, then add a keyframe at the beginning and about one second later, add another keyframe. These keyframes define the start and end positions of the image. Since the positions are the same, nothing happens. But if I go back to the first keyframe and change the x-axis value so the image starts off screen, it will now animate in from the left. If you want the photo to come in from the top, I can reset the x-axis to zero by double tapping it. Then move the y-axis to push the image above and out of frame. You'll notice if I delete the first keyframe, it makes the image static, that's because there's only one position set. I recommend setting the final keyframe first so you know where the image will end up, then adjusting the first keyframe to determine where it starts. Keyframes can also animate a zoom in effect. Let's set the second keyframe first, so the final position, then return to the first keyframe and set the zoom to zero. Now the photo will zoom in. To zoom in, then zoom out, go back to the timeline, extend the clip, double tap on it, then check the time difference between these two keyframes. First, add a keyframe at the very end, then go back one second and add another keyframe. The second to last keyframe holds the position, and then when we set the value to zero for the final keyframe, the photo will now zoom back out. If I wanted to move out of frame instead, I can delete the last keyframe, add a new one, and adjust the x-axis so the image moves right. This creates a zoom in, then move out of frame animation. Level 2 is adjusting animation speed. This one is super quick. To change animation speed, hold and drag a keyframe. Moving your second keyframe left makes the animation faster, while moving it right slows it down. What you're doing is you're telling the software you want to reach this position in a shorter or longer time. This is useful when you want to slightly refine the motion to suit it to your liking. Level 3 is smoother animations with ease curves. Let's recreate a left to right motion. Right now, the image moves in a linear motion. We can make it smoother by adding an ease curve. Tap this icon to open the graph editor and ensure the ease graph is selected. Then, go anywhere between the keyframes, tap ease presets and select slow in and out. This makes any keyframe animation much smoother. If we go back to the earlier zoom in then move right animation, applying ease curves to both sets of keyframes here will make the motion look even better. Level 4, custom ease curves. Now it gets more interesting. Instead of using the slow in and out presets, we can manually adjust ease curves for more dynamic animation. When you have two keyframes, you can use these two sliders in the graph editor. Purple controls the right keyframe and green controls the left keyframe. Sliding left slows the motion of your image as it comes in or out making it smoother while sliding right makes coming in and out faster. A U-shaped curve that looks like this creates a super smooth slide in. Ease 
if you adjust your curve to reverse this U shape so it looks like this, then the image will enter slowly but then speed up at the end. This usually looks quite bad but it may help you to visualize how this graph works. Curved parts of the graph indicate smoother motion and straight parts of the graph indicate sharper motion. An S-shaped curve like the slow in and out curve makes the image start slow, speed up, then slow down at the end. A sideways U-shaped curve keeps speed consistent but smoothly slows down at the end. A reverse S-shaped curve starts fast, holds its position, then reaches its final position fast. As you experiment more, adjusting these ease curves will become more instinctive. Level 5 is animating a longer path. Now, for paths, in frame and fit, this icon represents the path tool. Instead of moving in a straight line, you can create curved motion paths. By the way, for this section, we'll be zooming in and out frequently using the zoom tool for a better view. For this example, let's move the image left to right again. With the path tool selected, zoom out slightly. When you're between the keyframes, you'll now see these handles. Moving these handles shapes the path the image follows. For example, if I want the image to rise before dropping into place, I can create an upside down U shape. Now the image will follow this curved path. One of my favorite techniques is starting an image in the bottom left, then curving the path like this. Instead of moving in a straight line, it follows a more natural motion. And to top it off, if I move the purple slider left, it adds an ease curve, further enhancing the smoothness. You're not only limited to position or zoom, you can also animate rotation. Set a starting rotation of 500. Keep the second keyframe at zero for a smooth spin effect. To wrap it up, here are three real life scenarios where you want to use these techniques. First, bringing in relevant images, icons or videos. Instead of appearing instantly, Animated them in using the steps we've learned previously. Number two, animating titles. Make text come in and move out naturally instead of staying static. Number three, creating smooth transitions. Instead of basic cuts, use keyframe animations to bring in the next clip seamlessly. Place a new clip on top, offset it by one second. Add a keyframe just before the lower clip disappears. Go to the first frame and move the new clip off screen. You can move it left, right, even diagonally while zoomed out and it will animate in and replace the original clip. This is a cool way to change scenes instead of always using the stock animations inside the app. That's everything for this video. I tried to keep the pacing slightly slower with this one just for anyone following along. I'm still figuring out the best style of content for this channel with the little free time that I do have, but the videos will keep improving. Leave a comment below with your thoughts on the video and if you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't done already.